think it's recording. Yeah. Okay. Can you okay. See it? Yep. Hello, everyone. Uh, we have pleasure uh, to host Linjian Ma today. Uh, Linjian is currently a research scientist at Meta Platforms. Before this role, he pursued his PhD in computer science at the University of Illinois Urbana Champaign, advised by Edgar Solomonique. His research interests are numerical algorithms and high performance computing. His PhD thesis focused on developing efficient systems and numerical algorithms for tensor computations with application in data analytics and quantum simulation. Uh, thanks, Linjian, for accepting our invitation. The stage is yours. Yeah, uh, thanks. Uh, thanks for inviting me, and uh, I'm happy to talk about uh, part of my PhD work at this workshop. Um, today, I'm going to present faster accurate sketching for tensor decompositions and tensor networks. And uh, all the works are advised by uh, Professor Edgar Solomonic. So uh, today, I'm going to present two works. Um, the first one is titled Fast and Accurate Randomized Algorithms for low Rank Tensor Decompositions. Uh, this is published in Europe's 20, 2021. And the problem we are looking at is uh, low rank target decomposition of potentially large and sparse tensors. And here we like propose a new sketching algorithm that sketches the higher order orthogonal iteration. And the results are that uh, our, uh, in terms of accuracy, our um, the output is pretty similar to the standard uh, Hui algorithm. And also our algorithm has like better uh, computational cost. And the, uh, the second work I'm going to talk about is titled Cost Efficient Gaussian Tensor Network Embeddings for tensor structured inputs published in Europe's 2022. So here we are looking at a problem to sketch uh, the data that has a tensor network structure. So we propose an algorithm that choose a, a tensor network sketch um, that is uh, efficient to be applied on this uh, tensor network data. So uh, using this algorithm, we um, then can be able to accelerate both the CP tensor decomposition and the tensor train rounding. So uh, before diving into the details of the algorithms, I'll first uh, give some backgrounds, um, tensors, tensor decompositions, and also sketching algorithms. So tensor is a multi-dimensional array of data and it generalizes uh, vectors and the matrices. The order of a tensor is the number of dimensions and the dimension size is the uh, number of elements in each dimension. And tensors uh, uh, appear in multiple applications, for example, in data science, images, videos, medical data, are all um, can be viewed as a tensor. And also tensors are building blocks of the current uh, like deep neural nets. And also in scientific computing, um, tensors appear in numerical PDEs. Basically the discretization of high dimensional functions can be uh, represented as a tensor and we can use something like tensor decomposition in the reduced order modeling to accelerate solving these PDEs. And also in quantum physics, uh, wave functions, Hamiltonians, quantum gates are all tensors. And the uh, um, tensor network methods are widely used in quantum physics. So in this presentation, I'm going to uh, use tensor diagram to, um, to visualize the tensor algorithms. So in the tensor diagram, um, a tensor is represented by a vertex and the, the number of edges adjacent to the vertex represents the order. And each edge represents one dimension in this tensor. Um, Matrixization is the step to transform a tensor into a matrix uh, or uh, view a tensor as a matrix. And we can also view that um, using the tensor diagram. So uh, basically for all the three tensor I show here, we can combine any two of the uh, dimensions into the column and the remaining into the row. And this gives us different matrixization. Uh, we can also uh, use tensor um, diagrams to visualize tensor contraction. Uh, tensor contraction generalized matrix multiplication, and uh, for given two tensors, it performs reduction over specific dimensions. Uh, in the tensor diagram visualization, and a dimension is contracted if it has no open end, and uh, is uncontracted if it has open end. So, for example, we can um, visualize uh, inner product matrix product uh, tensor times matrix, which is uh, will, will appear in multiple applications, including CP and Tucker decompositions. And also Kronecker product, which is contraction of two tensors, but there's no contracted dimension. And uh, finally, the Cauchy row product, where there's a hyper edge that connecting uh, both matrices, and the Cauchy row product is uh, 
will show up in CP decomposition. So when the uh, tensor order or dimension size are large, it's hard to manipulate and uh, store the tensor. It's called the curse of dimensionality. And the tensor decomposition uh, represents a large tensor with a low rank uh, tensor network and the generalized matrix factorization. So a tensor network uses a group of small tensors to represent a large tensor. And uh, uh, commonly there are like several common um, net tensor networks people use to do the tensor decomposition. Uh, CP decomposition uh, uses a couple of matrices to represent the tensor and uh, there's one dimension that connects to all the uh, matrices. And uh, the Tucker decomposition has a star structure and it contains a core tensor and uh, several factor matrices and represents the tensor. And then the uh, tensor train decomposition uh, is a line structure. So later I'll talk about we can use uh, sketching algorithms to uh, accelerate the tensor decomposition uh, of all these formats. So uh, in the optimization of uh, tensor decomposition and networks, uh, one uh, very important and uh, commonly um, seen subproblem is the linear least squares problem with tensor networks. So this is a standard linear least squares problem, Lx minus y. Uh, but for tensor network problems, we usually have L to be a tensor network. And the Y being either a tensor network or some matrixization of a large tensor. And sometimes we also want the problem solution to have low rank property, then this is a rank constraint problem. So for example, uh, in Tucker decomposition with a uh, higher order orthogonal iteration, the left-hand side is usually a chronic product, right-hand side is a matrixization of the input tensor. And uh, we want the X to have low rank property. And after we get X, we can update both the one factor matrix and the core tensor. So for CP decomposition, this is an unconstrained least squares problem. And the left-hand side is a cultural row product right-hand side is a matrixization of the tensor. And another application I'm going to mention today is the tensor train rounding or tensor train truncation. So in this problem, we are given a high rank tensor train and the goal is to reduce the rank. So once, so, so the sub problem is that we uh, truncate one, uh, one rank in such tensor train and we can frame that one as uh, X being containing two sub, uh, like adjacent tensors in the tensor train and the L contains the remaining tensors in the tensor train and the right-hand side is just the input tensor train. So this is uh, um, like, this is also frame as a linear least squares problem, but you can also think of this one as a general like low rank approximation. So all these problems later I'll, I'll show how to accelerate, accelerate them using sketching. So briefly talking about sketching, um, so sketching randomly projects the data to low dimensional spaces and it uses a random matrix S uh, also called embedding. And uh, in this presentation, the number of rows of S is also called the sketch size. When applied on the linear least squares problem, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, instead of just uh, solving the uh, linear least squares problem, we first sketch the left-hand side and also right-hand side of the problem and then um, solve this sketched problem. Um, the one commonly used in embedding is the Gaussian random matrix, um, but this uh, Gaussian random matrix is not efficient when the L or Y are uh, sparse matrices. In that case, we would like to use sparse embeddings uh, to reduce the cost to only the number of non-zeros of, of the matrix we want to sketch. Um, so for tensor networks, um, the general uh, question uh, I'm going to talk about is that the, the tensor or matrix we are going to sketch uh, has a tensor network structure. For example, in the right-hand side, uh, the figure shows that when the uh, matrix we want to sketch has a cultural row product. In this case, we generally want the embedding uh, or random matrix also has some uh, tensor network structure that matches the data so that uh, sketching can be efficient. Uh, the problem we are looking at uh, is that we want to find the embedding so that uh, the uh, sketching output is accurate. Uh, basically, the norm of S times X to be close to the norm of X. And also, uh, we want the sketch size to be low so that the later computations can be efficient. And also, we want to minimize the uh, cost of this sketching. So with that, later, I'm going to just uh, show the algorithms we proposed. 
Uh, first is about uh, sketching for tacky decomposition. And uh, in this problem, the left-hand side is a chronic product, and also a uh, right-hand side is potentially a large matrix and can be very sparse. And also this is a rank constraint problem. So we propose a new sketch size upper bound for this uh, for sketching this rank constraint uh, least squares problem. And uh, we reach almost the same accuracy as the standard algorithm, but with better cost. And the second is about uh, sketching an arbitrary tensor network data. Um, we find accurate and cost optimal embeddings and then use the algorithm to accelerate CP decomposition and tensor train rounding. So, okay, so next, let's, let's uh, first take a look at the Tucker decomposition. Um, Tucker decomposition uh, decomposes the input tensor uh, into a core tensor with uh, several factor matrices. And uh, in the presentation, I assume that the input tensor has size S by S by S is also three and the Tucker rank is equal to R that is much smaller than S. Um, the higher order orthogonal iteration Hui is one commonly used algorithm to, to optimize Tucker decomposition. Uh, this is an iterative algorithm. It's an alternating minimization algorithm. And uh, in each iteration, uh, the subproblem is a rank constrained linear least squares problem. The left hand side is a chronic product. And also, we use this one to optimize one factor matrix and also the core tensor. Can I ask you a question real quick? Yeah, sure. So, this is uh, you're saying the HOI, but starting first from the HOSVD initial guess to say that it usually is fast or just from a randomized random guess? Yeah, so I think both algorithms are commonly used. Uh, and, and it's a uh, common to use from HOSVD. Are you using, saying here, you're you, starting from HOSVD as initial guess uh, and then HOOI on top? Or are you yeah. just saying start from any guess and then HOOI on top? Yeah, yeah, I'm just talking about like a general starting from any like initial. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, yes, so uh, for this algorithm, like commonly one can apply HOSVD first or can just use random values for the uh, like the core and factor matrices first and then run the iterative algorithm. So this algorithm has a cost of at least a number of non zeros of the input tensor times the Tucker rank. Uh, so when the tensor is really large, this cost is pretty high. Uh, HOI is a, a pretty like a fast algorithm. It has pretty fast convergence. Uh, in practice, um, usually it converges in around 10 iterations. So a couple of work, previous works apply sketching for Tucker decomposition. Um, this one previous work uh, by Osman Malik published in Europe 2018 uh, is a very good work that applies sketching on the alternating minimization for Tucker. It's actually one like that the work also motivates my uh, algorithm. So the advantage is that this algorithm is very fast. The cost is only proportional to the number of non-zeros of the input tensor. Uh, but the disadvantage is that uh, this uh, algorithm applies sketching on the uh, alternating unconstrained linear least squares. Um, so in AULS, uh, in each subproblem, we optimize either one factor matrix or a core tensor. Um, this makes it not an orthogonal iteration and uh, usually converges pretty slow. And uh, the accuracy usually is so, like lower than HOI. And the second lines of work applies sketching on HOSVD, which is a, a one sweep algorithm and is not an iterative algorithm. And these uh, lines of work apply randomized SVD on the matrixization of the input tensor. But the disadvantage is that um, the accuracy we can get is usually lower than Hui. And also the cost is also pretty high. So uh, we propose to directly just uh, sketch the Hui. So uh, to just to try to match the accuracy of Hui and also try to lower the computational cost. Um, um, in each subproblem of Hui, uh, we first solve an unconstrained problem uh, and get X star and then perform a rank R approximation and uh, use this one to update the core tensor and the factor matrix. We propose to uh, just uh, uh, replacing the unconstrained soft using with the sketched unconstrained soft, and then um, similarly uh, perform a rank approximation and then update the core tensor and the factor matrix. So there are two two questions for this algorithm. The first one is uh, what kind of embeddings we want to choose to make this uh, uh, sketch sketch soft efficient. And the second question is, <clears throat> um, so this is a sketching a rank constrained problem. So uh, 
like how can we make sure that the sketching output is close to the standard solution uh, to the or to the to the optimal solution so basically how can we make sure that our results are accurate so in terms of the efficiency uh um again this problem for this problem l is a chronic product and we want to efficiently sketch that and also the right hand side is a, is a potentially can be a very sparse tensor and we will also want to efficiently sketch that so two two uh, methods can be very efficient for those uh, one is leverage score sampling and the second one is tensor sketch. Um, yeah, I think uh, Vivek and Osman give very good talks on leverage score sampling. So I'm going to be short about this. So this uh, sampling is very efficient for chronic products since um, when we want to sample one row from this L, which is a chronic product of A and B, um, uh, we can actually perform a sampling on A and B independently and then combine these rows together the row we want to sample from L. So <clears throat> very efficient. And the second one about tensor sketch. <clears throat> sorry, this is the tensorized count sketch, and the, the tensor diagram is shown here in this figure. Um, so when sketching a chronic product, what we can do is to apply count sketch matrix on each mode and then apply a DFT matrix and then mix the modes and then apply a DFT inverse. So this kind of structure is also very efficient for the uh, chronic product. And also both uh, sampling and tensor sketch are sparse sketches and they can also be efficiently applied on the sparse tensor. And the second question is about accuracy. Basically, um, how accurate is our sketch like a run constraint problem? So we derive sketch size upper bounds for this problem. Here the uh, XR hat is the uh, sketch solution and the XR star is the optimal solution. So uh, in, in our analysis, um, we borrow the analysis from the unconstrained problem. Uh, and also, since we have a low rank approximation, we also apply Merskin's inequality to bound the changes in the singular values. So combining both analysis, we are able to get this bound. So uh, the, the, our proof shows that um, when the embedding is efficient for the unconstrained least squares problem, it can also be efficient for, for such a rank constraint problem. The upper bound uh, is pretty consistent, um, but it also has a factor one over epsilon times that for the unconstrained least squares problem. <clears throat> so this is a little bit worse. <clears throat> um, in practice, our algorithm pre uh, performs pretty well. Um, uh, it has pretty good accuracy, and also um, the cost is also pretty low. It's uh, linear with relative to the number of non-zeros of the input tensor plus some polynomial terms. So here I, I show some of the experimental results. <clears throat> um, uh, so tensor, uh, I, I, I form target decomposition here is the tensor's random tensor with spike signals, try to mimic the real cases. And uh, uh, this is all the three tensor, 200 by 200 by 200, and target rank we choose equal to five. Uh, we compare four algorithms, uh, Hui, and uh, our sketch Hui with leverage score sampling and tensor sketch and this reference algorithm that applies tensor sketch on the AOLS. Um, you can show in the first figure that uh, our sketch algorithm has a close uh, output fitness as the, as the standard Hui algorithm. Here, the fitness uh, is a measure of how close the um, target decomposition output to the input tensor. So the higher, the better. The second figure shows um, like how many uh, sketch size do we need to get pretty high fitness? For our sketch Hui algorithm, actually uh, 16 times R squares enough for the fitness to be close to standard Hui. And also the third, uh, third figure shows that um, the algorithm actually con converges pretty well. So each dot represents one iteration and uh, within 10 iterations, we can almost converge. Can you, so this reference, it's H O O I one you just this is just you went to completion so you did like ten up iterations of it we use with a with a single guess or multiple guesses. Um. Uh, oh, you mean the? I guess you did the reference there. You did about nine iterations, and then you but you did it once with a single guess, or you did you use multiple different guesses? Oh, it's uh once with a simple guess. Okay. With, with one guess, yeah. 
Thanks. Uh, so yeah, in in our paper, we tried different initialization. Like uh, so so in the first figure, this error bar. Since uh, we tried different in initialization, and different tensors. Um, ah, okay, okay, I see now. Yeah. And also, yeah. we also tried like uh, yeah, initialization here. We also have HOSVD for the like library score sampling based ones. We use randomized range finder. So this is you can think of this one as a randomized HOSVD. Basically, um, yeah. sometimes that can help. Uh, that can improve the fitness, but uh, I think not too much. Yeah. Good. Thanks. Yes. Mm. Oh. I have a question on the previous slide on your method. Uh, what's the intuition of using uh, DFT? I oh, think uh, um, I this correctly. One. It's one of your contributions. I mean. Oh, you mean tensor sketch? Yes, I, I'm not very familiar with this, but what's the uh, what's the intuition of using this DFT matrix? Yeah, so uh, uh, I think the goal is that um, so this tensor sketch contains count sketch, but we uh, people also want that. Tensor sketch itself has the property of count sketch, so um, basically that's that's why people use DFT matrices. And uh, um, it's I don't know how to talk about intuition, but uh, if you I mean look 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 at the derivation of tensor sketch, you'll really find that and why like DFT comes into the picture. Basically, okay. make the tensor sketch another special case of count sketch. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Yes. Um, I guess I'll uh, go to the second work if there's no questions. So sorry. Yeah. So for level scores, uh, Hui, uh, there is no difference between random, uh, random initialization and uh, SVD initialization, right? So, yeah, so yeah. I, mean, I mean that for your method. Yeah, that's a that's a good question. So. For this input tensor, yes. Uh, I mean, these two initializations doesn't change too much. Um, in our work, we also try some other tensors, especially for those like uh, with uh, large elements or very sparse tensor with some particular large elements, the initialization can matter. Um, if we don't have good initialization, we may miss those important elements. Um, so that's why like uh, sometimes we also want um, randomized range finder or actual SVD as the initialization. I see. So this is the synthetic data. I uh, sorry, I I forgot. Yeah. Yes. yes. Oh, good. Cool. Okay. I yeah. see. It. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. It could also. Uh, I'm not sure you did this, but it could be interesting. Um, because coming from the physics side, uh, often what I'll do is like look at something like HOSVD uh eigen or singular values of modes of tensors. So I would imagine that like. Using that as a as a idea of how good a component like mode is for sketching, I would imagine all of these modes have relatively you know uh, large condition numbers in the HOSVD sense, letting you have such a small rank. Did you try anything with more complicated data? Um, like say one well, mode had a more important uh, you know components, like if you form it for originally from let's say an HOSVD where you pick the spectrum of each mode and then reform a tensor? Uh, are these just like randomly computed, just pick random values and... Um, so uh, so I think the method you mentioned we didn't try, um, but we do try like different tensors, like, uh, uh, like you, you mentioned, for example, this rank one term that is very like, like much more important than others. I think that one we have tried and in the paper. Uh, another important thing we tried is the like a sparse tensor with like a very important elements. Um, that for those uh, HOSVD can improve a lot since HOSVD can help us find the important modes first and then we can iterative on that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So I guess I'll um, continue to the second work. Okay, so the second work is about uh, sketching general tensor networks, and uh, we use an algorithm to efficiently sketch that. So uh, previous works talk about uh, specific tensor network embeddings. Uh, for example, it, ha it has been shown that the chronic product embedding is, uh, is not very efficient. Uh, the major reason is that the output sketch size will need to be pretty high to make sure the, the sketching is accurate, but that makes the cost very high. 
And also uh, a couple of works discuss the tree embeddings, especially the tensor tree embeddings. Uh, this tree embeddings has been shown to be very efficient for specific data, for example, chronic product and also tensor train data, but it's uh, unclear whether they are efficient for the general tensor network data. Um, so in our analysis, we have sub a couple of uh, an, uh, assumptions. The first uh, important assumption is that um, we only consider the Gaussian tensor network embeddings. Basically, uh, each tensor in the embedding um, is a Gaussian random tensor. And uh, so in our analysis, currently we haven't uh, considered other embeddings like the uh, sparse embeddings or, or sampling. Um, um, so um, this is the first assumption. The second assumption is that we assume that multiplying two different tensors has a, a dense cost of uh, n to the cube. So we didn't consider sparse tensor in the, our analysis. And also um, we assume that uh, each dimension in the data tensor network that is to be sketched has relatively large size. So uh, we first uh, provide a sufficient condition for the embedding to be accurate. Um, so uh, this sufficient condition um, is based on the observation that if we have a tensor network embedding, uh, we can actually rewrite that embedding as a chain of matrix modifications, S1 times Sn. And uh, each Si is a chronic product of a Gaussian random matrix Ai and the identity matrices. So uh, when we want to make sure that the, uh, the embedding is sufficient to be accurate, we need to give a lower bound for each AI to be lower bounded by a term that is proportional to um, the number of vertices in the embedding uh, multiplied by some terms related to epsilon and delta. So in this figure, I, I give an example. So um, in, the, uh, in the embedding, we have four vertices, A1 to A4. We can rewrite this uh, uh, or restructure this embedding to, to make it a uh, multiplication between S1 times S4. And each SI is a, a chronic product between this uh, black dots, which is a, a identity matrix and uh, a AI. So to make sure that this is uh, efficient, uh, and this is accurate, uh, we just need to uh, lower bound the number of rows of each AI. So uh, in this sufficient condition, uh, we use two uh, key prior results in the proof. The first is that um, if each AI random matrix is accurate, then the chronic product between AI and identity matrices will not change its accuracy. And the second property is that um, if each, A each SI um, is accurate, then we are able to bound the accuracy for the multiplication chain. So uh, we have a sufficient condition that defines a family of embeddings that are accurate. So next we propose an algorithm that uh, finds an embedding within this uh, family of accurate embeddings uh, that also have an efficient computational cost. So the embeddings we use contains a, a chronic product embedding and also a binary tree of small gadgets. So let's consider here in this figure, X is uh, input tensor network data and it has four dimensions. So um, each tensor in the chronic product embedding is used to uh, effectively reduce the size of one uh, dimension. And uh, after that, uh, each small gadget uh, is to use to sketch the product of two tensors and recursively reduce the uh, dimension, reduce the uh, sketch size. So note here that um, each small gadget contains two tensors, and we uh, design that for a reason to uh, to to make the cost minimized. Basically, we're able to show that com compared to only one tensor, this two tensor system or small gadget is more efficient for some small for some specific cases. Uh, sorry, Lin Jian. Uh, so yeah. all the gray uh, tensors are Gaussian, right? The th binary tree as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I have a question on this as well. Do you find the ordering of the nodes how to multiply them? them to the sketches? Oh yeah, so uh, this is a very good question. Um, so uh, let's say we first have a, we first define a contraction path for the X and that contraction path defines uh, like in which order we want to contract tensors together. 
And the, based on that contraction path, we can define this tree structure. And then in, after we get this tree structure, we can like fill in the smog edges with the two tensors. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Um, yeah, so yes, so and okay, so uh, so this uh, two tensor system, um, we are able to show that it's more efficient than the one tensor. And also the sizes in this uh, two tensor small gadget is chosen based on the um, input tensors to make sure that the cost is minimized. So uh, we have some analysis of the algorithm. So let's C denote the asymptotic cost for our algorithm and the C op denote the um, optimal cost we can get under the sufficient condition. So this is the actually the cost lower bound, uh, like a, uh, within the sufficient condition constraint. And M is the sketch size. So when the input data has a general hypergraph structure, then the our algorithm is optimal up to a factor of square root of the sketch size. When the input data is a general graph rather than a hypergraph, we can um, our algorithm has a better optimality factor. This is M to the 0 0.375. And the, for the special case, and it's actually very common in practice. So when the uh, input um, tensor network we want to sketch uh, has a property that each data uh, tensor has a dimension to be sketched. This includes the chronic product or tensor train. Then our algorithm is uh, opt always optimal. So uh, here I'm going to briefly talk about how we are able to derive the lower bound and uh, design the algorithm. Um, so um, a good way to understand this is uh, start from the very small system or basic system where we only have two tensors in the data tensor network. Then um, in, um, so then, then we're able to derive the lower bound. And uh, so all the proof is uh, still in the paper. I'm going to skip that. Uh, in particular, if the uh, input data tensor network contains two tensors and they are chronic product of two vectors, then the sketching cost will be lower bounded by this uh, sketch size times 2.5. Um, so when we have more tensors in the data, for every contraction path, we are able to define um, the contraction cost lower bounds, uh, which is the sum of the two tensor contraction lower bounds that is defined by this uh, contraction path. So um, the true lower bound should be like a sum, like a go over all the possible contraction paths and uh, um, this is the global lower bound for that. And uh, this lower bound analysis also help us uh, define this, uh, design this algorithm. So uh, if the input data tensor network contains two tensors, then we can design the embedding that attaining the lower bound. And uh, the embedding actually is just a one small gadget, contains two tensors here. So uh, in this figure, I show like the, the two tensors and the, the dimension sizes that can make the make it efficient for sketching a chronic product. So if the data contains more tensors, uh, then we'll have like a multiple small gadget. Each one is used to like uh, each one is used to uh, sketch the um, sketch one contraction in the contraction path. Okay, so. Um, here, uh, I'll show some of the experiments to show like um, um, in which cases our embedding is more efficient than the previous work. So um, this is about sketching a tensor train data. So the input tensor train has order six, and also we consider the dimension size being 500, uh, and uh, we consider different ranks and the different sketching cost. So the way uh, we calculate the number of floating point operations is that, um, we fix a sketching error to be 0 0.1, and when and then we uh, pick the lowest sketch size that can give us the uh, give that can make sure the the error is lower than the 0 0.1. Um, so um, so we consider three embeddings. The, the the TN embedding is basically our algorithm, and also tree embedding is just the um, using a binary tree of a, a binary tree network rather than a binary tree of small gadgets. Uh, basically changing each gadget to one tensor to see whether that one is efficient. And, and then the tensor train structured embedding. Um, we can see that uh, when the tensor train rank is low, our algorithm is more efficient. When the um, tensor train rank is high, 
then um, all the three embeddings can give us a very similar number of flops to get uh, to be accurate. And um, this is experiments about sketching a chronic product data. So we consider um, uh, each dimension size in the data tensor network uh, is 1000. And we vary, uh, we change the number of orders in the chronic product. Um, again, we also have a fixed sketching error and uh, 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 compare four different uh, embeddings. So our TN embedding achieves the best ATM Zotic cost. Although like uh, TN and also tree and also tensor train embeddings are both pretty efficient, um, but the cartridge row product embedding is, uh, is not very efficient. The sketch size needs to be super high when the tensor order is large. Um, so we can apply this uh, um, sketching algorithm to uh, both CP decomposition and tensor train rounding. So for CP decomposition, um, we compare four different CPLS algorithms with sketching, the standard ALS with not sketching, and also the leverage score sampling algorithm proposed by Larson and Coda, uh, published in SIMAX 2022. And also um, Osman's work on recursive leverage, leverage score sampling in SAML 2022. So uh, the standard al algorithm um, has pretty high cost since it has a term S times N, as is the uh, dimension size of the input tensor. The leverage score sampling algorithm uh, is much more efficient, but it also has a term R to the N. So when the order is high, this is also not very efficient. The recursive sampling algorithm is uh, uh, like a, has a better scaling in terms of R, and the R algorithm has a little bit better scaling than the recursive leverage score sampling. So uh, one disadvantage of, of our algorithm is that uh, we need a large preparation cost, and this cost is a, is a one-time cost that is uh, uh, multiplying the uh, tensor network sketching, uh, tensor network embedding with the input tensor. And uh, um, this is um, kind of cannot be avoided since we are using the Gaussian embeddings, which is a dense embedding. So this makes the preparation cost very high. Uh, this can be reduced if we use like a sparse embeddings, which can be a future work. And also know that uh, I think Vivek has a recent work that uses a leverage score sampling and uh, the scaling is uh, like uh, better than our algorithm. And the second application I want to mention is the tensor train rounding, also called the uh, tensor train truncation. And the setting is that we have a um, we have a high ranked input tensor train uh, here. Let n denotes the uh, number of tensors, s being the um, dimension size of the tensor train, and the big R being the input tensor train rank. And the goal is to reduce the rank to be small r. So the sketching is efficient or useful when small r is much smaller than big R. So the, the um, condition we have is needs to be like big R is greater than big N times small r. So in this case, uh, applying our uh, sketching algorithm can have a better cost. Um, this uh, The cost will be n times s big R squared times n small r, which is a little bit better. So uh, the way to use this uh, uh, sketching algorithm is to um, first uh, use a randomized range finder with uh, some tensor network embeddings to reduce the bound dimension. And then after we have this uh, reduced rank orthogonal form, we can uh, then apply a truncation again on top of this to reduce the rank and get the output a tensor train with uh, rank small. Um, yes, so I think I've uh, mentioned all this. Um, know that the previous work um, uh, published in scientific, like CISC 2023, uh, uses tensor network embedding on the tensor train truncation. And it actually uh, gives the same uh, computational cost as our analysis. Um, but our analysis uh, are also able to show that this kind of uh, algorithm is optimal uh, within the sufficient condition constraint. So uh, with that, I think I would like to conclude this talk. So we introduced two algorithms. The first one is for the low rank Tucker decomposition of potentially large and sparse tensors. And uh, we propose to directly sketch the um, higher order orthogonal iteration and uh, using leverage score sampling and tensor sketch, we can get very good results with the efficient cost.
And the second algorithm is about um, uh, sketching arbitrary tensor network. And uh, the problem is that we are given a tensor network data and we want to seek um, cost optimal embeddings. And uh, using our algorithm, we can get uh, efficient algorithms for both the CP decomposition and the tensor train truncation. Yes, and uh, I would like to take questions. Thank you. Thank you, Jian, for the great talk. Uh, any question? Yeah, I have a quick question. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, can you give us some intuition about how you use the optimal contraction order from X to design the order of your sketch? Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, so in our analysis, we assume that the contraction order is uh, fixed. So we have a data tensor network. We also have a fixed contraction path. So under this fixed contraction path, we can design a like an optimal embed, like a, a sketching algorithm. Um, so uh, this is also the way we apply uh, this algorithm to CP and the uh, tensor train rounding. Since uh, in CP decomposition and tensor train rounding, the uh, contraction path is also fixed uh, due to like the, um, the like, this is called the like a, a dimension tree analysis or something. For example, in, in CP decomposition, we want to contract, for example, from one end to another and uh, similarly for tensor train rounding. So um, this is, uh, so, so fixed contraction paths that's how our algorithm works. Yeah. But so how do you how does this impact the your contraction path, the one of the sketch? You use the same one? Oh, okay. Yeah. So kind of the same one. Yeah. Let me so every time we want to contract two tensors in the data contraction path, we apply this one ga gadget. Uh, basically, this structure will be consistent with the contraction path and the uh, yeah, I will say the it's just a, every time contract two tensors, apply one small gadget to reduce the size. Um, it's okay, just for that. So it's like an intermediate between doing the cut your row product, right? So you say you take two tensors that you might cut your row, and then you just apply this these two sketching gadgets in between. Is that correct? But yeah, one small gadget contains two tensors. Yes, yes. One, but one for each one. You have one gadget for the one tensor that you're gonna cut your row, and one gadget for the other, so that you're Reducing on both of the hyper edges, right? Uh, so just like this diagram shows, you have you know an upper gray circle and a lower gray circle. And these are replacing your country route. Yeah. Um. Let me see. So, um, country row, you mean some contract? You mean uh, reduce the size of a hyper edge or something? But this is not a hyper edge. Yeah. 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 So. Oh, um, yeah, this is not a hyper edge. That's not a hyper. Okay, yeah, I see yeah. what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Any other question? If there is not question, uh, we can. Just wrap it up and uh, thanks again, Linjian. Uh, it was a great talk and it was a pleasure having you today. Yeah, thank you. Great work. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye bye. Have a good day. Bye.